Hi, thanks so much for joining me. This is Kelly. I am the owner of The Cranky Sheep. And today I'm going to do a video of how to use your sock tube when it arrives. Um, if you haven't done an afterthought heel or afterthought everything with a sock tube before, then I'm going to walk you through how to go ahead and pick up the stitches. I'm not going to go over any specific patterns for your heels or toes. There's a lot of those out there, but I definitely want to show you how to go ahead and pick up the stitches because that's the part I think that a lot of people are intimidated by. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some patterns that are out there that you can check out for some heels. Um, so one of them is a free pattern and it's called the Afterthought Heel Socks by Laura Linneman, and that's available on Ravelry. And there's also another pattern called Smooth Operator Socks, and that is by Susan B. Anderson, and that's a $5 pattern. Both of those use an afterthought technique. So you can actually go ahead and put other heels in your sock tube. What you would have to do is uh, knit on one side. So if you're gonna do a short row heel you would knit one, you'd pick up all of your stitches around, but you'd pick, you'd only work on half of those stitches that you pick up, and then you would have to Kitchener that to your other side, the stitches that are on your other needle being held. So, you know, you could do something like, um, Mina Phillip has a great German short row heel pattern. Um, she uses that on a lot of her sock patterns, so most of her sock patterns will have that, and I think she does have a free one available that you can use. Um, you could also do something like the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is uh, by the Socks Therapist, and so those are just a, a couple recommendations you can look into uh, for, your, for your actual heel pattern. Um, and toes, there's a lot of different toes out there, kind of the same idea, you could use any of those those patterns you can also do just a basic toe and heel and um, you would do that just by decreasing evenly on on um, your sides both sides so this is how your kit is going to arrive um, it'll have some cute packaging and you will also have the label um, if it was a yarn company uh, that that I purchased the yarn from. The yarn label will also be included. This is a Legacy Fiber Arts yarn um, and it's beautifully dyed and you're getting kind of these micro stripes in here. Um, you'll also have your 20 gram mini skein included in here. Um, needles are not included. Um, everybody has their own preference for needles out there, but um, you'll want to go ahead and ball up your mini skein to use that. So once you've got your mini skein balled, you will be ready to go, but it will show up in a little mini skein form like this. So uh, you can start either end of your sock blank, your sock tube, and they will um, arrive having this red and white twine going through the stitches. So you can just clip that. Um, I like to just run my needles through first, but you can uh, clip it and then put your needles on one by one as well. So um, when I put your uh, sock tube on the the twine, it is uh, all the stitches are going to be seated properly or with the right leg in front so that you can just go ahead and run your needle through the stitches. And this um, you could start if you want to do uh, your cuff first, that's usually um, how most people begin. And um, so you just go ahead and pick up all your stitches all the way around for your cuff. So let's see if I can do it here. There we go. And if you want to use double points, you can use double points. If you want to use magic loop with a long circular, you can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and pick these stitches up like that. So that's how you would pick them up for your cuff. You do that all the way around and then you can knit whatever cuff you want. You could do one by one, two by two, twisted rib, whatever makes you happy. 
So um, that I think is pretty straightforward for most people. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to how to pick up for your heel. And it'll be basically the same for your, for your toe as well. So let's move on to that and we'll go from there. So what I like to do when I am um, trying to decide on placement of my heel is I would have my cuff on here. My cuff is typically uh, usually around inch and a half to two inches. So I would measure from the top of that. I like my leg to be, the leg of my sock to be right around seven inches. Um, that's kind of ideal for, um, for what I like. So what I'm gonna do is because I don't have my cuff on here yet. Um, I want to. I do want to be able to show you um, how to pick up for the heel. Though is I'm going to put my measuring tape at. I'm going to measure an inch and a half past where I would um, for my cuff. So I've got that here, and then I'm going to go down to seven inches. So seven inches is right here, and so I'm going to go ahead and grab a needle and I'm gonna pick up my stitches. So I wanna pick up, this is a 60 stitch sock blank, so I want, or sock tube, so I want to pick up half that number. And if you can see, um, I'm going in and picking up the right leg of those stitches. So the stitch, is here and it's this loop and the V is going to point down so this is when you're picking up from one direction and then we're going to turn it around when we have to pick up the other stitches so um, I'm going to just go along and pick up oops, half the number of stitches so um, in this case I'm going to pick up 30 stitches because my sock tube is 60 stitches total on this first needle. And you always go right into the right leg. That's going to orient the stitch on your needle correctly. And you won't have to worry about any twisted stitches. Let's count those. I have one extra. Okay, so I've got half my stitches on. Now I'm going to turn it and pick up stitches one row apart from where I just picked up. So here's the row I picked up. You can see that easily on my needle. And I'm going to skip picking up the row right here. So we need a little bit of scrap yarn to be able to, to weave in ends uh, because we're gonna cut a stitch right in the middle and then we'll pull out from one side and then pull out from the other side. So you wanna make sure you leave a row in between. So we're gonna come over here and I can see my last stitch that I picked up was right there. So I follow that one down, I leave a row in between, and I'm gonna pick up the right leg on these stitches here. Okay, that should be correct, but just to double check, I'm going to count those as well.
Perfect. Okay. So I've got the right number of stitches and I am ready to cut. It's really not as scary as it might initially seem. So um, with a nice pointy pair of scissors, you're going to just guess about where halfway is and you're going to go in and you're just going to snip one leg of one stitch. Make sure you don't cut either of the ones that are on your needles. You can kind of pull it out. You could put another needle underneath if you want to make sure. I do have my hand down the tube to make sure that I'm not cutting through to the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and clip. It's just as easy as that. So now what we have to do is go through and you're going to pick that row of stitches out. And you will have um, all of your stitches seated properly and you'll be able to go and it doesn't take that long to pick these stitches out and you'll have plenty of yarn just leaving that one row to weave in ends whoops as long as I don't split my yarn there which I did keep pressure on the needles to hold them apart so that it makes it a little bit easier for me to see that stitch and get in there and pull it apart. So I'm just kind of pushing apart those needles apart with my hand as I'm doing this. And once you get half done, the other half goes a little quicker because it opens it up and you've got more room to really get in there and get those stitches. All right, so there's half done, and now we'll do the other half. And some socks that have stripes in them, um, not the micro stripes like this, but wider, you know, half inch inch stripes, you can choose your placement so that you either interrupt a stripe or you come in between two stripes when you place your heel. That's the nice thing about a, an afterthought heel. Um, you can really choose where you want that stripe to go or that heel to go in between the stripes. So you have a lot of freedom to adjust um, your heel and the placement, and um, it, it makes it really nice uh, for those for that purpose. And um, and then you can decide. You may have to make your cuff, your leg of your sock, a little longer, a little shorter, so that you can end up with your heel just where you want it placed on those stripes. So there it is. I've got my uh, heel opened up and then I would just go ahead, um, I'd even out my stitches on another needle and go ahead and start knitting my heel. Um, the ends, I just kind of tuck to the inside and once my heel's all done, I go back and um, weave those in and secure those really well. And uh, so next up, I'm going to show you how to pick up for the heel. It's very, very similar to, do, I mean, I'm sorry, not the heel. We already did the heel. Uh, we're going to pick up for the toe. So I'm going to show you how that goes. It's very, very similar to the heel, except we're going to go all the way around. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so what we want to do is something very similar 
to what we did with the heel. Um, and so if my cuff is up here at the top and my heel is here, um, what you can do is you can measure your foot and typically you want to do about two to two and a half inches um, from your heel to where your um, your toe decreases or going to start. So um, less than the measurement of your foot. So um, my foot I think is around 10 inches. So I usually start my um, I usually knit until my foot of my sock is somewhere between um, seven and a half and eight inches and then I start doing my my toe decreases so you can um, when you're doing these you can uh, you know knit as much of the toe color as you want um, or you can just dive right into doing the decreases. So I am gonna go ahead, I think I'll make this one a little bit longer and I'm gonna measure all the way to eight inches. So that's where I'm gonna pick up for my toe. So I will show you how to do that now. I kind of mark with my finger where I want to where I want to pick up so you're gonna do the same exact thing same pick up you pick up in the right leg of each of the stitches but this time we're gonna go all the way around the sock because um, as with the heel that's on this uh, the same side of your sock tube but the toe goes all the way around uh, so I will show you how to do that you could, some people when they have a sock tube will just fold it in half, find the center point, and then cut at the center point so that you could use all of your sock tube for socks. So you could, um, you know, just you know, be able to know where that heel is going to be so you can make a cuff as long as you want which you can certainly do that um, so if you divide your sock tube in half if you have a single sock tube some of my sock tubes are actually um, a matching set and so if you don't have a matching set and you just decide to cut it in half and you want to use all of the tube for your socks then you can definitely do that um, and you'd have, you know, depending on the, the length of your foot, you could have a really long leg for your, um, the leg and the cuff. Um, but because I like my, uh, the length of my leg kind of mid calf on my socks, I knew that I would have a lot more, um, fabric because it's a this is a full hundred gram skein of yarn um, so I knew that it would be quite a bit longer than the seven inches that I typically like so um, I'm just I'm not I didn't cut mine in half because then I'll actually have um, a whole piece left and then I can use that you can do preemie hats you can finish off your tube if you've got leftover bits of your tube you can finish them off and do preemie hats you could do a little mini pillow and by sewing the ends together or doing even like three needle bind off or Kitchener um, so there's a lot of options um, you could do fingerless mitts um, with your leftover tube um, there's a lot of fun ideas and I'll start compiling a list of things that um, that I think would be really fun to do with your leftover sock tubes um, so that you'll have that as well. So there it is. All of my um, stitches are picked up all the way around and so when you get back to the end you'll see that you're off by one row because you go all the way around because it's you know done in a spiral that last one is going to be from the row below and then the very first one I picked up is up just a little bit higher it's the next row up um, so 
that is how that will look. So don't let that surprise you if you if you see that and you're unsure of, of why it's doing that and why you're not lined up. So um, what I would do is I like to have a little bit extra so I don't mind cutting up a little bit higher than where um, than where I need to be. You definitely want to cut at least one row, two to three, if you have the room. Um, we give you just a little bit of extra um, security so that you know that you've got enough um, enough tail left to weave in. Um, so I'm just going to clip the same exact as before, just one stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull this out all the way around. Um, you could, so as I'm pulling this out, you can see these stitches are now becoming live. You could go ahead and run a, a string through there. You can take the twine that was on the top and run it around through there if you want to. Um, or you could just leave them hanging live like that. Um, it's not, they're not going to come undone that quickly. Um, and you can always pull back a little bit and um, go down a couple rows and, and then pick those back up if you want a little extra room, a little extra tail. So... And we'll just go ahead and do this. Okay, so now we're separated out. So I could, if I wanted to, just pick up these stitches and start with a cuff on this one. Um, but if I had something that was striping and I wanted to match up the stripes, then I could certainly just look further down um, the sock tube to see where they matched up and if I wanted exact matching socks. socks. And um, so then this, where I pulled out a couple rows, this is just gonna pull out nice and easy. Um, and unless I caught the one somewhere, there we go. So as you can see, I've got plenty of tail left there. Um, I'll snip that a little bit and I can just go ahead and start knitting my, my toe. So it's, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so here's the toe. We've got the heel stitches picked up here and then I can go ahead and back and pick up the cuff. I typically will knit the cuff first and then I will just kind of work my way down the sock. I'll pick up the stitches for the heel, knit the heel, and then work my way down to the toe, work the toe, and um, then I have a finished sock. So it's not too bad. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. And um, the email address is hello at thecrankysheep.com. And I... Uh, I thank you so much for your purchase and I hope you enjoy it and I can't wait 
to see your finished socks. So be sure to tag me in your Instagram pictures um, and, as, and Facebook as well, just at The Cranky Sheep. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of your socks and everything else that you make with the sock tube. So have fun and um, stay in touch. Thanks so much.